the knowledge. Amen? So that there, there is um, a lack of knowledge that can just destroy you, and you're not willing to receive the word, to retain the knowledge of God, the message that God is giving you. Because once this, if the, whatever the message that God is giving you is preparing you for what God is taking you or where you're becoming, amen? But you don't come to listen. Some people don't listen. The Bible says they harden their heart, amen? But I love Peter. You know, I love Peter because as Jesus gave the message, when Jesus was giving the message, and Jesus asked them, who do men, no, I'm sorry, when Jesus was giving the message and Jesus told them, drink of my blood and eat of my flesh, he wanted to take them deeper into the message. He wanted to take them deeper into himself. He said, drink of my blood, eat of my flesh. And there was disciples with him at that period that said, this is a hard thing. Amen. And when it became hard for them, the Bible says they walked away. Not, not to follow him anymore after that point. And you get many people like that. When the message they're trying to receive becomes hard, they walk away. There are some still sitting in church who have walked away. They're in the church doing stuff for the church, but they walked away because the message became hard. Submission became hard. Humility became hard. Forgiveness became hard. But they thought, but they think, if I just keep doing the things of God, I'm all right with God. I'm all right with God, but they don't. But the Bible says faith without what? It's dead. So they still dead. And the evidence I want, uh, and this is what God is wanting us to understand it. And when they are still dead, it affects people. Amen. When you are still dead, even though you are in church and you are still dead, though you're doing some stuff in church, your life affects people. And, it, and, 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 and God has a problem with those people right there because your life affects people because you say God because you're being in the church and you appear as you're doing God, but your behavior and the way you act and function causes people to see God in a way he does not desire to be seen. God does not want his name brought as a reproach among the unsaved. Amen? Amen? Do we understand it? Anybody think that's interesting? God does not. God has a problem. God, you want to get you want to get God upset? Act in a way to cause the unsaved, the unsaved to see him in a way he does not want to be seen. Amen. That's why God says, if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out. I'm, I'm going to expose that you were never really with me, that you weren't really with me. Why? Because you're causing people to see me in a way I do not desire to be seen. So in that, so God gives a message. Go to the next one. That deals with the what? He deal he he deals it gives a message that deals with the heart because the based on how the heart is is how we deal with one another. Amen. We found out the Bible says out of the heart flows the is out of the heart flows what? Issues. There are issues, and you notice I, I still got it here. But this last week I had issues here, and I had the verse here. But I want you to notice that there is a renewing. And when there is a renewing, there is a pushing out of one thing and there is an entry of something different. Can we get an amen? amen? There is a pushing out of something. They cannot, these two cannot coexist. The issue of the heart and the word and love cannot coexist. Because why? It is the, the Bible says that the, the Bible told us that when she touched him, the virtue dried up the issue there is there has to be some virtue in you amen if there be any virtue in you if there's virtue that's moral excellence that means the character the nature of god that which is produced through the seed of god for the bible says unless the branch is connected to the vine it can do nothing in itself unless you are connected to jesus christ you cannot produce the fruit of christ but if you put if you begin to produce the fruit of christ you're pushing out issues Amen. Issues are being resolved. And now when people, when they tap into your heart, they're finding love and what? The word and what? Love. Amen. They're finding that there's a renewing uh, in you. And it's funny because when we think about that renewing, I want us to go to um, 2 Corinthians 4.16 first. I want, look at what I say, this is real. There is a renewing. In a, there is there has to be a renewing and the problem in this is that sometimes the, and we may be struggling people are struggling with the renewing amen but I like the Bible says as a babe desiring the sincere milk of the word of God that they may grow thereby it is one who has a desire for the word that causes him to grow in God can we read go ahead and read 2nd Corinthians 16 I mean verse I mean chapter 4 verse 16 
said Second Chronicles. No, no, Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians, okay. Four or sixteen. Oh, okay. Second Corinthians four sixteen. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though we don't lose what. Heart. We don't lose heart. We say the heart is what. The intellect, emotions, in our desires. We're not going to lose how we're thinking or how what we feel or what we desire. Go ahead. Even though our outward man is perishing. Now watch this. I want y'all to get this. The outward man is what perishing. Hey, that's why, don't get me wrong, that's why I thank God for a miracle, I thank God for what he's doing, I thank God for the miracles he's doing, you know, but when God caused the blind to see, did they still perish? Yes. When, the, when he called the lame to walk, did they still perish? Yes. When he called the dead to rise at the point of Lazarus, did he still perish? Yes. So the outwardly man is what perished. So watch out for a gospel that just pays so much attention to the thing that's perishing. The thing that is perishing is only to reveal the, the one who, will, when God moves on the thing that's perishing, is only to reveal the one that will say that which is eternal. Amen? He says the outwardly man is what? Perishing. But go ahead. Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Somebody say the inwardly man. <laughs> say your spiritual man is being renewed what? Day by day day as a babe desiring the sincere milk of the word of God that they may grow thereby when you have a desire for God your spiritual man is being renewed day by day amen watch this let me give you let me give you, let me give you an, uh let me give you an understanding though I'm being renewed day by day amen my inwardly man is being renewed day by day my spiritual man guess what I'm still getting old amen things are still decaying amen Things we have not put on that new body yet. We have not put on that new body that does not get sick. This body is decaying. This body is corruptible. Amen. Everybody understand that. This body is corruptible. But your spiritual man, my God, your spiritual man is being renewed day. Everybody say day by day. You are increasing spiritually. You are feeding. Somebody say feed yourself. Feed yourself. Though your hourly man. And we do not lose heart based on things that are constantly changing or fading or corrupting away amen why because we don't lose heart because spiritually we are maturing day by day our hope our desire is not in those things which perish he told the jesus told the ones when he turned the five low and two fishes he told them that you labor for those things that what he told them not to labor or pursue him for the things that perish amen because life does not consist in the bunch of things you possess. Why? Because those things perish. Don't lose heart when you see things constantly changing. Don't lose heart. Don't lose your mind. Don't lose. Let your emotions go crazy. Don't lose. Let your desire change because things that are temporal are changing. There are people who have lost people, and that's what they lost someone in their family, and they lost heart. They lost how they were thinking. They lost their emotions. They lost their desire to God. Why? Because they, because why? Somebody's flesh perished. Amen? But God is saying to his sons and daughters, don't lose what? Y'all, come on, say it. He's saying to his sons and daughters, don't lose what? Heart. He said, let your heart be in, your, in those things, those treasures above, where rust and moth and the thief cannot steal. Let your heart be connected to Christ, that word of God, that when things on the earth Begin to change. How many of you know, man, could, could you imagine certain, I think about Jerusalem for a minute. In Jerusalem, Jerusalem is used to being attacked. Amen? You, I was telling my wife, I was, I was looking at something, and I was talking about, I said, if, if, if America got hit, it would lose its mind and its emotions and desires. Why? It almost happened in 9-11. Why? Because America is not really prepared like nations who often get attacked. America don't have no bunkers to run to. They don't have no. So if somebody came here, there was no bunkers in 9-11. People just died jumping out of it. There was no place for safety. Amen. And you, I want you to see that spiritually. It's my, because when, when America, if we turn away from God, we have no protection. 
There is no protection, no nuclear bomb, and all those things that they talking about that can protect us. Why? Nations that would rise up against America has nuclear bombs too. Amen? There is no protection. Would we lose our mind if things start breaking apart? The job, the jobs start tripping. How many of us found going through some adversity? The job, you lose your mind. Lose your, lose your emotions, your feelings. You don't even want to pray no more. Don't want to even worship God no more. Losing, your, uh, losing heart means you no longer want in your heart to worship God. You don't want to praise God no more. You don't want to give God. Why? You lost heart because why? You, you are, and God, I believe God exposed, exposed us sometimes, exposed us and revealed things in us that we began to lose heart in certain things that we may lose, things that are temporal. And he told us not to lose heart because why? Read it again. Therefore, do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, mm -hmm. yet in the inward, sorry, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Your spiritual man has a place. Amen? When we look at Jesus on the cross, <laughs> Jesus did not lose heart. Yeah? How do we know? He even told the man on the right hand side, this day you're going to join me in where? He said, don't look. Now, watch this. If you look at Jesus on the cross in the natural eye, it'll make you want to lose heart. His disciples did. Their heart became cold and they went back to doing the things they normally used to do. Because they looked at him in the natural and saw that in the natural, he, come on, in the natural, he was beat down. In the natural, he had thorns, blood all over him. His face is tore up. He's nailed to a cross. But he says, don't get caught up in the temporal thing. And Jesus said, he even told the Pharisees, he said, you, you destroy this temple, I'll raise it back up in three days. Amen? So he didn't lose heart. And those who would have locked into Jesus won't lose heart because they have a prophetic word that causes them to stand even when natural things are perishing. Amen? We're getting older. You're getting older. I'm getting older. You know what I'm saying? Things starting to change and your health starts to change. Things begin to happen. But lose not heart because your God has already made preparation for you in the spiritual realm. And if you are maturing and growing in the spiritual realm and you're being renewed, you're not going to lose heart. Can I get an amen on that? And he said, watch what he said. He said, this is not no instant thing. Am I right, Amber? He said, not. He said day what? Day by day. Amen? Day by day. Okay, let's go to 2 Corinthians 4, 18. I mean, yeah, chapter 2 Corinthians 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. While we do not look at the things which are seen, mm -hmm. but at the things which are not seen. Mm -hmm. For the things which are seen are temporary, yes. but the things which are not seen are eternal. Yes. So we don't, we're not those who look at the things that are what? Come on. The things that are what? Temporary. We look at the, thing, we look at the things which are eternal. We keep our mind. And, if you, and what, what is God saying? If you're actually eating my word, then you can walk past the temporary things. You can stand and worship and praise in temporary things because the word that you have sust will sustain you through the temporary things. God has given you and I a prophetic word that exceeds the temporary things that's passing away. So you can laugh at the temporary thing. You can laugh at transit because you have been because your renewal in your heart has you anchored in a love that cannot fail. Amen. Are we getting this? And what verse was that you just read? In chapter four? Yes, the last one. The last verse. Okay. Let me see something. In Corinthians, right? Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Okay. Hold on. Um, read verse three eighteen. Three eighteen. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Come on, we are beholding who? Oh, man, come on, y'all are, come on, y'all are going to We ain't sound excited about it. He done told us that the, the temporary thing is passing away, right? That we are being transformed, right? 
to that spiritual right and we don't get caught up in the temporary things amen because we are those that behold in the mirror to what everybody say the glory, glory. see that's the hourly man is perishing but look at somebody say but some glory is being shaped and molded and trans you being built into Amen. Some glory of what you were called to be before the foundation of the word. God manifests the word is producing in you. And, and watch this. Even though things are temporal and things are changing, but the glory of the word of God is producing in you who he is. Go ahead. Beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord mm -hmm. are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. So we are being changed into the same image from glory to glory. So from day to day to, to, to glory to glory. Amen. Every day we're being transformed into a little more glory of the image of who God is. Come on, somebody. Every day, every day. You may not, you may think, well, this was a, just a casual day, right? You may think this was just a, just a, a, a regular day. But see, you in the, if you're in the classroom, you're in a place where every day is renewing you. Amen. From the, what, the temporal things to the eternal things and the glory of God is being birthed in you every day. That's why I love it. That's why I put down day by day from glory to glory. Amen. Every day that you're eating the word of God, though what? It, now, this is interesting because every day you may find yourself going through something what? At work. Every day in the natural, you might be losing something. Amen. Every day in the natural, some things may not be going the way you want them to go. But why do you keep your praise? Why do you keep Keep giving God glory. Why do you keep worshiping God? Why do you keep celebrating? Because you know that your heart is not attached to the temporal things, but to eternal things. And you know God got you. Amen. If he spared not his own son, what is it he would not give you in Christ Jesus? If he didn't spare his son, who is the one taking you from glory to glory? Amen. He is the image that's producing in you from glory to glory. And why does God want us to understand that we must be renewed and we must go back to the classroom? Why did God uh, go back to the classroom for me? Why do, he says because why? Because that's what you're what you're majoring in. That's that process. What you're majoring in every day. The outwardly man is perishing, but your spiritual man is what? being renewed you are growing spiritually every day and every day that you are growing spiritually you are what going from what going where from glory to glory you're more glory of God come on somebody though I'm getting old and though things are changing and I'm I'm you know people are retiring and people are, have all these things going on in their life but if, as long as they're locked into the branch and the branch is producing the glory of God in you every day amen and you are growing in God every day you are being renewed every day so when you walk out the classroom the way you live the, the way in him you live and move and have your being no matter what situation you are being confronted with somebody ought to see the glory of God they ought to know how God think how he feel and what he desired in that situation of adversity amen and there but see somebody said well I'm battling with these things what am I battling I'm battling with that temporary stuff amen I'm battling with that stuff in my mind I'm battling with those issues that you no know, temporary relationships didn't work out for me I'm battling with temporary situations with my father I'm battling with temporary situations with my mom or uh, friends or uh, people I knew in church that I've, that I've been hurt or I've hurt or certain situations I'm battling with that and God says well my word is pushing out the old that's why he says for what he said he said, I renew your mind. Amen. The old man, he said, he's renewing our mind. Where all old things are what? Pass away. And all things are made what? So forgiveness and mercy, all who God is. See, some of us, you're struggling with things that God is already forgiving you for. You're struggling with things that God has already made a way for you to escape out of. You're struggling with things that God has already done and taken care of. You are struggling with the things. And Satan's job is to have you Pop, get your mind compound, compound, compound on things that are temporal. And God says, no, I've all, if I straighten out the big picture, don't you think I'll walk with you through these things? I'm the God that told you to have no thought, take no thought for what you should eat, drink, and wear. I'm the God that told you I know what you are in need of before you even ask me. Look at what I said. It's a bigger picture. Now, there's I, how many of y'all see the heart? I want them, they got to be able to see it too. This is what the heart. There, there's an exit of heart issues. There's an entry of the word of God. 
that what? And that's that spiritual thing, amen, where the outwardly man is perishing, but the inwardly man, the spiritual man is what? Every day is being renewed. And it's re being renewed. And the evidence, and the evidence that has been renewed every day, that the glory of God should be being manifested through your life. You should be looking more like him every day. Every day. Amen? That's the saving power, the sanctifying, the sanctifying power of God, the Holy Spirit of God, renewing you every day. Amen? So God's glory will be manifested in you. But what does that look like? And, I'm gonna tell you, and what's funny, if you notice that the heart issues bring great chaos to what? Relationship. See, what's funny is when you and I have our heart issues and we are affected deeply by the temporal, I'm going to hate my boss because he fired me. I'm going to hate my husband or my wife because I didn't get what I wanted out of them. I'm going to hate my dad because he wasn't there. I'm going to hate my mom. So I got all these issues from relationships that are what? Chaotic and full of drama. Why? Because some people, because they didn't get renewed. Amen? Carnal people like to take people and keep them in bondage. Amen? But to be spiritually minded is life. That's what the word says. To be spiritually minded is life. To be carnal minded is death. That's the word of God. So let's look at, so I want to, let's, let's kind of look at the trend. Go back to, go back to, to the, no, to the last one. So when we are fleshly and we deal with, with our heart and we deal with one another, there is chaos. And there is hurt and pain in those relationships. Amen. So in the classroom, God has to renew our heart and our mind that we can be able to walk in love with one another, to be able to walk in. And that's why it says one body in who? Christ, Christ is to destroy the yokes, to destroy the hindrances. I mean, the bitterness, the anger. He has come with forgiveness. He has come with love to destroy how we dealt with one another. Amen. That we may be able now to what? Show the how will the world know we're his disciples in the way we what? So he has to show us what love really is. He has to show us what love is. He has to begin to teach us what love looks like. And you know what's funny about love? When you begin to learn about love, God's love, and when when you begin we, when we begin to learn how God really loves. That love that we begins to learn about begins to teach us how to love God, love self, and love others. Amen? And it's interesting that we, want, we got people who want power, but they lack so much love. They lack the very evidence that God is actually with them. I'm going to show you in Scripture. They actually lack the very evidence of the glory of who God really is. And Satan tried to shift that glory to you. And see, Simon the sorcerer couldn't fool. The Bible says he bewitched many people with signs and wonders. He bewitched many people. Amen. But when it came to the end, the Bible says his heart. Amen. It's how he got baptized in the water. But yet, when it came time for the Holy Spirit, he tried to purchase it. The Bible says his heart was not right. See, God is looking at the heart to see people got you fooled. You thinking God looking at what you're doing. No, he's looking at what your heart and why you're doing it. So God wants to deal with man's heart because if man's heart is not right and is carnal, he begins to bring death. He begins to bring destruction. He begins to bring chaos to a world. But God says, but I need to clean up that heart because if it's one body in Christ, they're going to have to what? They're going to have to walk in love. Now, I want you to turn with me. Go to your Bibles to go to, let's go to um, 1 John chapter 4. Because if I'm growing in God and I'm maturing in God, the evidence of me growing and maturing in God should be if I can have the ability to love like God. Amen? So let's begin to read at the seventh verse. First John chapter 4, verse 7. Mm -hmm. 
Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. So he's saying to us, you don't even know God or belong to God if you don't understand his love. Everyone that what? Everyone that what? Is, is born of who? So you can do a whole lot of miracles. You can do a whole lot of stuff you think you're doing. But in Revelation, he told me you, you left your first love. And what's interesting is, if you don't know God's love, you don't know why God does what he do. Amen? You, you don't know that God does, you don't know that God doesn't do what he do to get fame and notoriety. Can we get an amen? Keep reading. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So let me take so if you have the spirit, then you're gonna know what? If you have the Holy Spirit, you're going to know what? Love. Because if you don't know love, you don't know who. Let me give you another verse to back that up through the Holy Spirit. Um, hold up. Is it Romans 5? I want to make sure he says that through the Holy Spirit, the love of God is shed in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. I always thought it was Romans 5. Someone help me get there. Where it says the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Hmm? Five, five. Oh, five, five. And hope maketh us not ashamed, because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. The love of God is shared abroad in our hearts. But so. The love of God, the, one of the evidence that you got the Holy Spirit is what? The love of God is being what? Shared up by what? The Holy Ghost in your heart. So John understood that if you have the Holy Spirit, the love of God is being shed abroad in your heart. Amen? Yes. Amen? That's, that's Romans 5.5. 5. That the love of God is being shed upon our heart. So when John says to us, if he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is, should be shedding abroad God's love in your heart by the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, the love of God should be being manifested through your heart. In, the, in your thinking, in your emotions, in your desires. Amen? Amen? Amen. Keep going. Verse 9. Verse 9. Verse 9. This all. Um, in this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world, that we might live through him. So love, so God even showed us that the love the Holy Spirit is bringing into you and I heart, abroad, the thing in our heart is to show us that it's God's love was manifested through him sending his son into the world, right? If the love of God was, he says, in this was manifested the love of God toward us. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. We were dead. So he sent his son into, this is the love of God, to send his son. He's saying love, what, what was love? He said love was to sacrifice what he loved that you and I must live. So I want y'all to remember this. Love is a sacrifice that will cause somebody else to live. Hmm. So if the Holy Spirit, if you are going from glory to glory and the Holy Spirit is being poured in your heart, it is teaching you to sacrifice for someone. So guess what? I'll sacrifice my appetite to be, let's say sex, for somebody else to live. I'll sacrifice 
what I want and not lie so somebody else can live. He is telling us this is the manifestation of God's love. Can we get an amen on that? Amen. Mm. This keep going. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. What's the definition of that word? You want me to look? I can say it. You want me to look? Yeah. Go ahead and say it. Um, pretty much a, a sacrifice. A sacrifice. He sent his son to be a sacrifice for us. He said, this is love. Now watch, how many of us get, come on, Holy Spirit, let us see this clearly. He is showing us that a love, he said, I'm going to show you what love look like. Love look like God himself, the creator of heaven and earth, sends his son as a sacrifice that you and I may live. Hmm. He said, I got to give you, my word is going to teach you this type of love because the, because fail love, man ideal of love, was the love that brought issues in your heart. A love that was self-serving, a love that was all about what it wanted, a love that didn't care, like a love like Cain. What kind of love did Cain have? The kind of love that says, I'm not my brother's keeper. A love that would murder his own brother. And one thing as God has been teaching me, he says, as you're growing from glory to glory, your love is growing. And when that love is growing, there's a sacrifice that you're going to be called to operate in, to move in when you deal with people for them to live. We found out last week on last Sunday that the heart of God, one thing about the heart, is to esteem another higher than oneself. We found out that Jesus sought no reputation for himself, only for what? The purpose of God. Are we getting this? See, spiritually, daily by daily, I'm increasing in my spirit, and I'm learning how to love. So since I'm learning how to love, I'm learning how to deal with people in bad business transactions. I'm learning how to deal with people when, mar when marriage is being shaken. I'm, living how to I'm learning how to deal with people when kids won't act right or when parents are tripping. I'm learning how to mature in God to be able to even deal with my enemy and be, and be able to walk and act a certain way that my enemy sees the glory of God. Amen. Keep reading. Beloved, mm -hmm. if our God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Say it again. Beloved, if our God so loved us, we ought to we also ought to love one another. If Christ is the example of our God. Amen. For well, he is the he is the visible image of the invisible God. Amen. He who is, he is he who has caused you and I. But Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. So when you see him, and when you see him act and move and how he operated, then if he is our example on how God loved us, how is it that we have the same spirit and we don't function and move and operate in the same way to love others? And the trials of the trying of yours in my faith is to what? To prove to it what? To increase your ability to love. To what? To bring glory to God. I think it's not strange when the trials come to try your faith. Try what? Faith come by what? Hearing what? And Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my what? Commandments, my word. But God, but watch this. But how can I do this? How can I, man, I'm getting hit this way. I'm getting hit that way. I'm getting hit. How can I love that way? Because 
I'm walking in the spirit. What do you mean I'm walking in spirit? Meaning that what he says, the outwardly man is perishing. Amen. So I'm not going to let the temporary things that people do cause my mind to be removed. He said, let your, he said don't have your heart be what? Don't let your heart be troubled. In other words, don't let your heart fail you. Why? When the temporary things and people act according to temporary things, don't let it move you out of the gift and the promise and what God has established for you. Don't let it move out of what God really came to give you in Christ Jesus. So I'm like, yeah, I can deal with this. Yes, I'm gonna say I'm. I can say I'm sorry. Yes, why? Because I understand that my inwardly, my, my spiritual man has matured me to learn to bring glory to God, even in an adverse situation. That's hurting me. That's hurting my. Uh, that's hurting my pocket. Hurting my family. But God's word keeps me able to stand. Why? Because the promise of God is so much greater than that adversity I'm being confronted with. And I know he was trying to show me and teach me how to love through this adversity, how to operate. And, when, and love, let me say this too, love does not deviate from truth. So telling somebody the truth don't mean I don't love you. It actually means I do. Because what Satan has attacked is love. But it makes sense that he will attack love because it says in the scripture, because of iniquity, the love of God will wax cold in the hearts of many. Satan said, what I'm going to do is when darkness increases itself, when lawlessness increases itself, people are going to become more cold hearted. They're going to withdraw from love. They're going to walk around. Somebody, I was wounded by the church. I was wounded by the church. I'm hurt by it. The They're always paying more attention to their hurt than their deliverer. So iniquity has caused people's heart to wax cold. But Jesus came to the, the anointing to destroy the yoke that caused your heart to wax cold. Because when your heart is cold, the black man hate the red man. The red man hate the yellow man. The white man hate the brother. Everybody hate one another because of the issues in their heart. Amen. We're doing, and God is wanting to deal with the issues of your heart. He's renewing them with the word of his love. And you are spiritually growing. Look at somebody say, I'm spiritually growing. Say, every day, you're seeing some glory. Amen. Amen. Keep reading. Verse 12. No one has seen God at any time. Mm -hmm. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. Somebody should have screamed. Say it again. Read that again, please. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another. If we love who? One another. Oh, I love God. I love God. God says, I'm going to measure your love for me in the way you love one. Don't tell me you love me, and yet you hate your ex-husband. Don't tell me you love me because you hate your father. Don't tell me you love me because you hate your boss. We know that God dwells in you in the way that you love. Isn't it funny how he did it? Because we knew sin. How many of us know in the beginning, we knew sin dwelled in man. Why? In the way they murdered, in the way Eve gave what? Uh, she gave Adam the fruit. In other words, she didn't care if he was going to stumble. We know that sin dwelled in us the way what? Cain slew his brother. And yet, we backbite, we slander, and we act. And we say God with our mouth, but the love of God is not flowing in our heart in the way that God measure it. And see, that's real power. Somebody say real power. Because it's, it's power. You got to have the power of the Holy Spirit to love someone that you know don't like you. You got to have the power of the Holy Spirit Come on, to give a drink to someone that you know tried to kill you. See, people don't want this power. They don't want, they want that external somewhat power, 
so people can see them. But God says, I see your heart. You, there's no love abide in it at all. And everything you think you want to do for me is to show off you. Because every time I test you to see if love would operate, all I see is your flesh. You ain't got time for this. You ain't going to do this. You only do things that are convenient and comfortable for you. You say you want to you say you want to serve me, but show off you. But I told you to deny yourself. I told you to operate in greater love. What you mean? Deny yourself and pick up your cross for there's no greater love than one who would what? Lay down. And I told you to lay down and you saying, no, I'm going to stand up because I want everybody to see me. I want them to call my name. I'm prophet. I'm apostle. I'm this. I'm that. I'm that. And God says, there's something wrong. Just like he just, just like he told, just like, just like the man of God told Simon the saucer, there's something wrong with your heart. All you have to do, once you, if you're getting in the classroom and you're learning, if you go on YouTube, you'll start discerning. There's something wrong with some people's heart. It look good to people, but you, if you know the truth, if, you, if the word of God is in your heart and you know how God moves, you'll be like, there's something wrong with this brother's heart. But the first person you're going to discern is your own heart. I don't like the way I was thinking about that person. I don't like the way I was acting toward that person. I don't like how I allow my flesh to win in this situation with that person. I'm convicted. Isn't it funny that people are convicted when they're not getting what they want when they're material things, but they're never convicted on how they treat other people? You ever notice that they, they ain't got no conviction in it at all, the way they talk to somebody or the way they act or uh, they, their gestures and all that. They have no conviction at all in that area. But they are convicted when they felt like they didn't, well, when they didn't give something because they felt like maybe they were going to get something back. Somebody say, help us, Lord. Help us deal with our heart, God. God, replace those issues with your love, with your word, which is love. Go ahead. Keep reading. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. Oh, he has given us what? His spirit. And, and, and watch this. He has given us his spirit, right, uh, Kenley? Mm -hmm. And if he's given us his spirit, Romans, Romans 5, 5, 5, 5 says, and hope maketh us not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy, by his spirit, by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. The love of God is shed abroad. In other words, God, the Holy Spirit is bringing all things into remembrance of who Jesus Christ, who is an expression and manifestation of God's love toward us. Toward a people, you and me, who did not love God. Because the word says, we, love, we didn't love him, he loved us first. So we had to even learn what love we, look at someone say, I, I do, not do not and did not, and did not know what love really is. Love really is. Until, I came in contact Until I came in contact with the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit. And as my outly man yeah. is perishing, yeah. my spiritual man is being renewed, being renewed. Daily. daily. So I'm learning how to, love how to love like God. Like God. I'm, learning I'm learning how to walk in love, walk in love. Like, God. like God. Every day. Every day. Which, reveals which reveals the glory of God. Every day. Every day. Amen. Amen. Look at God's glory. Keep reading. And we, verse 14, and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son as Savior of the world. How many of you know, if you reject Jesus Christ, you reject God's love? Wait a minute. How many would have just said? If you reject Jesus, that's why you can't come to the Father without the Son. Because the Father's love is in the Son. So when you reject Jesus, you actually reject God's love. Because the word tells us that God's love was manifested in him sending his son 
that we may have life. So to reject the Father's love, which is the Word of God, which is Christ, is to reject God's love. That means you desire to stay in hatred. Because if you reject love, the opposite of love is hatred. And what Satan has done and deceived people is that he's trying to, y'all better get, let, please see what the Spirit of the Lord is about to say. He is trying to masquerade hatred as love. Satan is a deceiver. So what he is now doing is that he is masquerade, he's doing his, he's doing, oh, he is, he has now created his masterpiece. And the greatest deception is to what? Masquerade love, hatred as love. That's why when you hear people who are willingly desiring to continue in sin, their argument is that this is love. And saying that people have the right to love, what's the word they use? To love whoever they want to love. That is Satan's deception to masquerade hatred as love. And that's why people are having a problem today who hearts who are not really maturing in God. They're having a problem because they don't see it as hatred. They just see it as a choice. See, when you only see people just making choices, then you feel no urgency to pray for them. You feel no urgency really to see what's really going on. But when you are able to see through your spiritual eyes because you have matured, you are understanding that that man is actually inflicting hatred on the other man. That that woman is actually inflicting hatred on the other woman. That that person who is not married, when they sleep with that man or woman, you are actually inflicting hatred and destruction. But Satan has done such a great job in masquerading that your feelings, your intellect, your heart, your emotions, your desire tell you this is love because you feel something. But it is hatred. And in the scripture, he just told us that if you love, how can, if you love, how can you love God who you cannot see? He said your love should be manifested, right? In the way that you love one another. How can I love my brother in operate contrary to love when I deal with him? How can I love my sister and operate contrary to love when I deal with him? And see, people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that's hatred because that becomes a self-evaluation and you don't want to really look at yourself as a person who is a hater, but you are. And so was I. You are a hater and you seek to destroy, to gratify, and to fulfill the lust of your flesh. And if you really understand the truth, you'll understand the grace of God and his desire to save you because the road that you're going down is going to bring nothing but destruction to you and everybody you heap your lust and perversion upon. Is that the truth, huh? That's the word of God. You hate people. That's why you lie to people and deceive them. And let me help you, help, let me help you and me. Let me help you and me. So you can, I don't want you, see, God give me the truth, why? So I can hate what I'm doing and get what? Get renewed. Songs 101, I said, I read last one, read again. I will sing of the mercy of and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when willest thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the, watch this, I hate the work of them that turn aside. He didn't say he hate the person. He hates the work of them who turn aside. Why? Because your work destroy people. Your work murder people. Under the masquerade of you, um, under the masquerade of yourself, of you self pleasuring yourself. But God says, deny yourself. 
pick up your cross and follow me so you and I can stop damaging other people. Let me clean up your heart that you and I can stop murdering and abusing other people and yourself. Amen? He ain't mad. He wants, he wants to redeem us. Watch this. He says, it shall not cleave to me. A forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Whosoever privately, watch this, whosoever privately, I'm sorry, whosoever privately slander his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hates in high look and a proud heart will I not suffer. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell with me, dwell within my house. He that tell lies shall not tarry in my sight. Why? Because those actions affect other people as well as yourself. They're not funny. They're not cute. And the only reason we do it is to get what we want. But God says, deny yourself. I love you. I want you to deny yourself. I have a better plan for you. I have better love for you. I have a love for you that people won't use you, but people will love you. Amen? It's time to walk in what? But we can't do it unless we get to Christ. The body can't do it unless it get Christ to destroy the yokes in us. Amen? Those things in our heart, that lust and foolishness in our heart, keep going. But the Bible says the heart is wicked and deceitful. God has to what? We want God to renew that. And we have a clean heart. Go ahead. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, yes. God abides in him, mm -hmm. and he in God. Yes. Go ahead. Verse 16, and we have known and believed that love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. He who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Amen? evidence that you have the Holy Spirit. What? God's love is abiding in you. What type of love? Sacrificial love. The kind of love that people will see God's glory in your behavior and situations and circumstances. Amen? And I'm going to tell you why some of us have a struggle with it. Many of us have a struggle with giving love because we've been hurt by a false ideal of love. Let me tell you something. If you grew up one thing, if we grew up not really knowing what love really is, then we will begin to manifest the love we learn about. And that's why we have to have an encounter with God that began to renew our heart and cleanse us up so we can stop functioning in a love that was falsified and not real. Amen? A love that caused us to damage people and be damaged. God says, one body in Christ will not be up, will be walking in love. What God is building, the glue of it is love. The spirit is bringing love. The love of who God is. The love of why God does what he did and why he's doing what he's doing. And the, love, and the love that God has for us. Amen. And that love is the love of God's salvation, which he has given us through his son. Amen. And that love, he's saying, I want to see that love. You know, people, like, we like to make songs, all I need is King Jesus. Well, if you got King Jesus, it should be manifesting in the love that you have for others. Amen? No, wait, I'm out of finish. Go ahead. I want to finish setting this foundation. Go, go ahead. Then I'll let you, then I'll get, I'll hold on to your thought. Okay, go ahead. Verse 17, love has been perfected among us in this. Watch, listen to what he just said. He says, herein is our love made perfected. Perfect word perfected means whole, complete, and mature. Amen? Go ahead. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. So we are, 
as God, who God is in the world as God is in heaven. Amen? Through Christ Jesus. He says to us, herein is our love made perfect, made whole complete, that we may have both. Herein what? What the verse, read the verse above what it says. Above 17? Mm -mm, yep. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. And we have known and believed that the love of God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. And herein is our love made perfected. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. When you and I are operating in the day of judgment, if you are operating in love and love is operating in you, you can be bold. And, the, and that bold, and why? Because if you have the spirit, the spirit of God is producing the love of God operating in you. The holiness of God, the righteousness of God. Everybody say, day by day. Day by day. day. Amen. Glory to glory. Glory to glory. Day by day, the glory to glory. Amen. That the spirit of God is, that you say I'm growing and maturing. And I'm getting equipped. To be to be ready for the, uh, the enemy. Not, the enemy is not going to harden my heart. Amen. He's going to find me fully. He's going to find me fully prepared for that day. Operate in the love of God. Go ahead. Because as he is, so are we in this world. So we are to be in this world who he is. We pray it all the time. Our father who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. How do we get on and how do we get on earth to be like it is in heaven through the seed of Christ, which is the manifestation of God's love? Amen. The Bible said there's no greater love than one who will lay down his life for his brother. Amen. To sacrifice. And I'm going to tell you, what am I? Somebody tell me, what are we sacrificing? What are we sacrificing? He told us in Romans. Is it Romans? Present your body. So he's saying, watch this. He's not going to tell you and I deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me if he's not requiring a sacrifice. Then he tells us, then the scripture says in Romans, present your body as a living what? Holy and acceptable as your reasonable service. Let your mind not be conformed to this world. Let your mind be renewed. How? Go back to the classroom. Understand him as rabbi. As one who's going to teach you and I through his message what love really is. But to receive it, we have to humble ourselves. And we have to reject the ideal of what the world has given us as love. We must reject the ideal of this new, this new um, love is you no know, the sexual when, when it was a sexual movement. And everybody thought you could have sex. That we're just loving everybody. Love everybody. Love 15 women. Love to, they know during the sexual revolution. Everybody just want to love everybody. And then they put that under love. Amen. That's supposed to be love. Now it's this now we and, they, and you know what's so funny? I thought I'm gonna tell you what's peculiar. That they have this is song and they it's song called Freedom, right? And there's a there is a there's a platform that people are talking about freedom. That platform that they are, that, that is not the freedom of God they're talking about. It's the freedom from God. That song and the ones who are using it now are using it. And the one, even the one who wrote it and the ones that singing it, they're not talking about a freedom of God. Because a freedom of God actually brings some boundaries. Because love has boundaries. Can I get an Amen. So the kind of freedom they're talking about is a freedom we want to be free from under the will of God. We want to be free from under the love of God. We want to be free to what? Do whatever we want, whenever we want, how we want, what we want. We want to be, we want to be a law to ourselves. We want to be a God to ourselves. We want to be free from God. I told him something. Let me tell you something. I want to share this with you. And I, and I wrote it down. I was in my car, and I'm not going to speak. I'm not speaking politically. I'm speaking righteously. 
I was in my car. And I don't know, I had this thought because when I had this thought uh, on my mind, I'm thinking, you know, people, people want to say Trump, and then people want to say, say her name, so I will not mess her name up on a sicker. Kamala, because I don't want to do no disrespect to her. They want to, Kamala, right? They want to say these two candidates in it. And when I was in my car, I never thought that God dropped this thing in my spirit. I was like, this was crazy. And I, and I was like, mm, God, that's so interesting. And the Holy Spirit dropped, and he said, I want to show you something. He said, my sons, first of all, he said, my sons and daughters will never sell their sonship, their relationship for some political affiliation. Meaning that they will never become somebody who become identified in some political affiliation to sell the way they were operating, moving, functioning God. That's number one. Number two, that the sons of God understand this, that you will never choose a candidate based on who sinned and not sinned. Because the sons of God already understand that we have all sinned and there is no one in this room or no one on the earth that has not that has been created that someone can't go in your history and bring back your past and then try to tag you as a sinner. So your righteousness can never be as in your sin, your righteousness is in Christ Jesus. And then you have those who don't want to receive your redemption. And that's OK. That's for you to believe. Amen. So it's never about sin. But the Holy Spirit broke this thing. I was like, God, that is so crazy. I never saw it. He said, it's not about, do not measure it by sin. But the Bible says that it is those who delight in sin and delight in others when they partake of it. I'm like, huh, God? He said, no. He said, there are those who don't only want to advocate sin as a means of righteousness. And in their, in their advocation, when they're advocating sin, they want people to accept sin as a normal and righteous way of living. He said, the scripture says, some like darkness because their deeds are evil. He says, so if you are a person and you are behind something that it is sinful in the kingdom of God. It is not one thing that somebody's struggling with sin and they made they struggling with sin and God needs to re, you know redeem them sin. versus someone who is actually advocating sin, meaning they embrace sin, they want to make sin a righteous way of doing. He said, that's how you tell the difference. I said, God, I see. Because when you take sin, it's like, let me give an example. I'm going to give you one example. There's a difference between me saying I go off on Amber. Let's say I go off on Amber. And when I go off on Amber, and then I start preaching, it's good to go off. I think everybody should go off. I think that's the way God wants everybody to move. I think let somebody know how you feel. If they get your timing wrong, curse them out. If you, if whatever you need to do to express. So now I'm not one who's sinning. I'm one who's advocating sin to a point that I want others to behave and perceive it as a means of righteousness. That is wicked. Because the sin was, I did sin when I went off with him, but conviction will cause me to turn and ask God to forgive me. Now, if you don't forgive me and want to tag me as somebody who always goes, that's on you. But I'm not trying to advocate it. And God talks about people who embrace his sin. Now, if you get this revelation, it will open your eyes to the whole situation. Who is advocating sin? Who is taking that which is ungodly and not only saying, not only do they not care it's ungodly, that they are saying it is righteous and it is the way that, and we want people to accept it. We want it to be the way of life. That's the difference. Because it won't be um, what sin is greater than the other sin or who sinned. Because anybody who sinned and advocates sin, and push it as a means of righteousness and push it as a mean let's make it law your heart is wicked and ungodly and you desire to make others sin the scripture you your desire is to cause others to sin no and God spoke that day. So I was sitting in my car. He said, he said, son, they are two different things. He said, all have sinned, and I'm the redeemer of sinners. 
versus those. Let me, let me show you this. Cain advocated sin. He walked from the presence of God and perceived that his way of living and his way of wanting to do things was greater than God. So he built a nation and people. And in that nation of people, it was the first place where the, it was the first place where, 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 where we had more than one wives. It was the first place where murder kept going. People who advocate sin, they advocate ungodliness continuously. And, and if you cannot look at that as something, it don't matter. Because to God, it does. It does. Even when you, you make, there, there is a difference between somebody who's sinning and struggling and somebody who's actually promoting and advocating the sin as a means of righteousness. Do we, does anybody understand the difference? Can anybody see the difference? You cannot have the Holy Spirit and advocate sin. No. You cannot have the spirit of truth and advocate a lie. You can't. You can be ignorant to the truth and God has to show you. Paul said what I did, I did in ignorance. Do we understand that? That's not love. To advocate destruction toward a human race, toward another person, that is, not the, that is not the act of love. That is the act of hatred. Okay, go ahead. Let's finish it up. But perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love does what? Cast out fear. Because fear does what? Brings torment. Fear will keep, love will cast out fear. But fear will keep you constantly in a place of torment. Am I going to get married? Torment. You torment about it. Is somebody going to love me? You always torment it. But perfect love cast out fear because you are, your assurance is in a God who cannot fail. Amen? Go ahead. But he who fears has he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Mm -hmm. We love him because he first loved us. We love him because of what? He first loved us. Meaning that you have to encounter love for you to be able to walk in love. Amen? So God had, so when we shifted from it's time to love to walk in love, God says, I'm about to see if you encountered it. I'm going to take you through it. I'm going to prune that vine. Because it's a difference to say it's time to love versus it's time to walk in love. But that's okay because we what? Day by day, from glory to glory, through his spirit. And though the outwardly man is perishing during that time, right? And you're getting older and, and things are changing and all that. But Lord, you are you are being renewed, and that renewal is bringing you to a place where God is getting glory in your life. Amen. Finish reading. Verse twenty: If someone says, "I love God," mm -hmm. and hates his brother, say it again. If someone says, "I love God," and hates his brother, mm -hmm. he is a liar. Mm. If someone say they love God. And hates their brother, you are a liar. Hatred is not collaborating with sin. Amen. That's love. When you don't, when you choose not to collaborate with sin, when you choose to correct someone, you're operating in love. Do not let the world deceive you when they say you judging me because you spoke the truth to somebody. But the way you speak that truth should be what motivated by love too. He who is spiritual, go to restore your brother in the spirit of meekness. Amen. In the nature of God, truth is spoken. And sometimes that truth is spoken very stern. It's a, ain't no, it ain't no, it's to the point God said, stop playing. 
Why? He's trying to save your life. Why? Because the actions in which you are doing are destroying you and others. Go ahead. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, mm -hmm. how can he love God whom he has not seen? We see him reinforcing it again. If you say you love God, go back to the end. Then it ought to teach you how to love your brother. Amen? If you love God, it ought to teach you. But that's okay because every year my spiritual man is growing, right? I'm being renewed every day. Yes, right. Every day. My spiritual man is being renewed every day, and I'm being transformed from glory to glory to glory as I look in the mirror of God's word. As I look in the mirror of God, I'm being transformed from glory to glory, and my spiritual man is growing daily. My outwardly man is changing. It's perishing. I'm losing things. Things are coming and going. Jobs tripping. You know, family is, family is, when you're losing family, you're gaining family. But what God is doing is me the only thing that is steady. My spiritual man is growing while everything else is perishing. Amen? And God, that tells me that God should be being, when I get older, it should not be less glory to God. It should be more. Because if I'm increasing daily spiritually, then God's, then the older I get, it should, not, I'm not talking about natural age. I'm talking about spiritual age. Because you can have somebody who's growing in God at, at, at 13, and by the time they're 20, you're like, this cat, 20. But spiritually, that brother is a giant versus somebody who's 50 years old and got a Ph.D. and got all that. I'm in theological school and all that, and yet, but he, he, he has not submit, surrendered or submitted to God. And some of them, I'm talking about even if he didn't go to, he don't know God, but he's very smart in his gifts. He's smart, and into, he's smart when it comes to business. He's smart making money. He's just dead. And his family has no life because he's not bringing any life toward his family. And that's why the scripture says, what is a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Amen? See, God wants to clean. There's an exit. I know this. God wants to push it out. He wants to get rid of chaos in relationships. How? He wants to renew how, how we think, how, our emotions and desires. To stop serving self. He wants to renew our mind. But how does he want to renew our mind? You want to hear me keep saying, how does he renew? He said the outly man is perishing. But the spiritual man is being renewed daily. Every day your spiritual man is being renewed. You are eating to renew your spiritual man. You are not going through. Look at what I'm going to say. I'm not going through no famine. Every day I'm going to be spiritually eating. I'm going, I, I'm a, every day I'm I'm going to be renewing my spiritual man. Though my outwardly man is with his name, I'm not going to be lacking no good thing pertaining to God. Amen? I'm renew and then I'm, and every day, the evidence that the Spirit has you going every day, you're going spiritually right, is there's glory. God is being glorified. What? You've been taken from what? Glory to glory to glory. Where they're now seeing God's glory being manifested in the situations and circumstances that you find yourself in. Amen. And God says, I prune that vine. I take you to class and I take it, make it harder to bear more fruit. I want more glory out of your life. I want them to see more, less of you and more of me in your life. And when they see more of me, their lives are being transformed. Why? Because the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, not where you at, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's a freedom. That's where freedom is. That's why I'm saying that America concept of freedom is a freedom absent from the spirit of freedom. So they so they're preparing themselves to make they've already done it. It was already, it's already started to make war against God by declaring it's like a rebellious nation saying we, free, we will be free. We will be free of you. We have come to an evolution. We have evolved among you. We will be free of you. We will make laws. We will do it. I want. We will do it. And if you're not choosing what side you're on right now, you're in trouble. This is bigger than any political party. This is the kingdoms. We're going to war. 
like Biden said, where well, like Biden declared, there's a war for souls. God had him speak it. There is a war for souls. So this day, choose who you're going to represent. Because you can't choose both of them. You, can't serve, you cannot serve God and serve yourself at the same time. You got to love one and hate the other. So God, I hate anything my flesh would want to consume that's contrary to you. Because whatever my flesh want to consume is actually going to probably damage somebody else. Amen? He wants to come in. Finish. Okay, where we at? Verse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 21. And this commandment we have seen and this commandment we have from him Yes. That he who loves God mm -hmm. must love his brother also. Him who loves God must love his brother also. And you have to understand something. Someone is not your brother because of blood. This scripture, when he's talking about love his brother also, the Bible says, if you have not my spirit, you are none of mine. You are not my brother because we were birthly born. No. Jesus said, who shall declare my generation? Amen? He said, who going to declare? There's a new generation. Then it talks about that new generation in Ephesians 2. Amen? He said the two, he said he made two the one and made one new man unto himself. Not Jew or Gentile. He made one new man, the sons and daughters of God. He made one unto himself. One new man. Read Ephesians 2. It'll talk to you about it. Amen? Isaiah where he says, his gene genealogy. Who should declare gene Jesus? Gene you cannot declare Jesus' gene genealogy without his spirit. Because you can't say you belong to him without the spirit. And you can't recognize him as a prophet. He was not some good prophet. As some religions want to say he was, well, he was a prophet. God, it, it doesn't matter what you want to think he is. He already declared who he is. And perceive you can't. And if, if to me, I wouldn't, let me tell you something. I wouldn't go around calling, like some religion, some people, is, they're crazy. Probably. Let me tell you why people are really blind. I won't say crazy, but blind. Why would you call Jesus a good prophet and he was a good man? No, you would have to call him a lunatic because he said he was the son of God. That don't make sense. If you call him a prophet, you have to call him a liar based on you wanting just him to be a prophet because he didn't say he was just a prophet. Amen? So to try to endorse him on the way you want to endorse him is not good because the way you want to endorse him makes you not, the truth of what he said would cause you shouldn't, that truth of what he said should be in conflict the way you're trying to endorse him. It will be in conflict with what his apostles, the way they endorse him. And it will be in conflict with any son and daughter. And daughter. That's why no son and daughter going to be nodding their head when he was a good prophet or going to be acting like what you're saying makes sense because it doesn't make sense because what you're saying is a lie. He is the son of God. He is God in the flesh. Come on, you can't be. See, that's, but that's the kind of foolishness it is. You can be hot and cold at the same time. You can be right, light and dark at the same time. He's a good prophet. But he ain't the son of God. But I believe he was a good prophet. But he said he, he, he came as the son of God. When he was born, they, they declared to say his name. They should call him what? Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. And then when he asked who men, when he asked who do men say that I am, they tried to tag him as a prophet. But the, but the father told Peter, this is my son in whom I will. And Jesus told and Jesus told Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father. So he recognized what the father told Jesus and was claiming it as truth. So you can't have both of them. Both of them. In other words, either you crazy or he crazy. The Bible says, let every man be a liar and God be the truth. I believe he is who he say he is. Do you believe it? Okay, let me, let me bring this. You read the last verse, right? I want to show you something, and then we're going to be going. I want you to turn your Bibles with me to Romans 13 for a second. And I want to read something real quick, um, starting at 
I want you to go to 13, and I want you to start at verse 8 for a minute. Because, watch this. How many of us believe the Bible where God says, God is not mocked, whatever a man sow, he's going to what? So we see that God has sowed in love his son. He is the seed from heaven. He has sowed. He has, how many of us believe that God has sold his son? He has sold his love in his son from heaven. How many of us believe that? I believe it. His son, is the, his son is the manifestation of God's love on earth and the action of God's love. Then if God is a God that says whatever a man sow, he going to reap. Let's read, start at verse 8. Romans 13, verse 8. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. He's, now, what is he telling us? He said, I, you don't owe nobody nothing. You are not, how many know the children of God are not in debt? Amen? Oh, wait a minute. Okay, I got a problem with it. How many of us know that the children of God are not in debt? He says, owe no man anything but what? You're not in debt, but you do owe what was sold to you. See, him saying love is saying, why does he say love, Prof? Why does he say, oh, love? Yeah, because God is love. But watch this. He says, Prof is right, because God is love. But he also, watch this. The Bible says, say again? He sold love. And he, he sold love. God so loved the world. So he's saying his motive, his, his, his motive, what was behind everything he did what was behind sending the word what was the what was the heart behind everything he did was love. what was behind everything god did was love. is love. love so he said that since that is the motivating factor to me sending the word sending my son to salvation to all that i've done then that's what i sold that's the motive that's what you owe now, love is manifested in you laying down your life for another. That's the actions of love. The motivation of love is you sending him, giving him up. You're giving him up. The actions of love is him laying down his life. So he says, oh, no man anything but to what? Love one. So he's saying, if you are accepting my word and my, my word and my, my word and love in your heart, now you owe the Holy Spirit is pouring into you the, shed, the love of God that you understand the whole word is to manifest God's love that now you are called to operate in that same manner. And when you and I operate in that same manner, watch what happens. Keep reading. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. The fulfillment of the law is the fulfillment of the law is God fulfilled the law by God's motivating factor was why? Now we know this. The act of love was the debt paid for sin. Amen? But God, oh, see, I can't pay a debt unless my heart is right first. See, we got to understand something. See, until you get your heart right, your actions... Faith without works is dead. My heart got to get right to do. Say, heart must be right to do. So I must understand the love of God to want to what? Be in compliance of God. Amen? And when I'm in a compliance to God because of the love of God, I begin to see people different. Even my enemy I see different. Because I now see them through the gift of God in Christ Jesus. Who has taught me the love of God. Amen. He says, watch, he said, the law. Now what? So when I operate, this is so good. This part right here, we bring it home right here. When one operates in the love of God, right? Through Christ Jesus. Watch, read verse 9. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery. I won't worry about committing a, come on, prophet. Y'all got it. I'm not worried about committing adultery when I'm operating in the love of God. I owe my brothers and sisters. See, so how can I stop sexual immorality? God changed my heart to love people to the point where I don't want to break or destroy people. 
even to the point where I will crucify my desires for them to live. I will crucify my desires for someone to live. I'm not going to kill that young lady. I'm not going to kill that young man. I'm not going to kill someone. I'm going to be now one who gives life instead of take life. And when you understand this, does anyone see, not do, how many of us see the revelation and the understanding when the Bible says the flesh wars against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh? Why? Because now the spirit of God operating inside of me, I now see a nature in my flesh that does not really care about what God wants to do. It wants to do what it wants to do. But now I see a nature in my spirit that begins to what? Reject the nature of my flesh to please God. In my flesh, I want to smell. I want to do. That's why the Bible says in the last day, people become lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. What does that mean? When they become lovers of pleasure, that's because their heart is falling away. Amen? And they now live in a society which is going on now that has freed themselves from God. And whatever pleasure, whatever your flesh desire now, not to come, is happening now. Whatever your flesh is desiring now, because it is law, you can partake of it. But it's better to obey God than man. And to operate in real love. So... He says, in the last days, there will be a, they will become lovers of pleasure. We are in the last days. Men now are lovers of pleasure more than they are lovers of God. Let's break, let's, 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 let's interpret God in the manner of which John says. If we interpret God, then we'll say it like this. In the last days, men will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of love. They're not going to want real love. They're just going to want something that make their flesh feel good. People will just want something to make their flesh. They will walk in the streets naked. They will have shows and movies and TVs about people sleeping with each other. Not mad. Sex will be the pleasure will be the primary factor. And when you feed a child, when they grow up, a babes, and you just feed them pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Even, even. Even Dizzy, Dizzy, and, and these shows, uh, what they do is bring kids up, and your kids, uh, that your kids watch these so uh, so called celebrity kids, celebrities. And what's funny about these kids, celebrity? Y'all ever notice about these kids, celebrity? And our young daughters get connected on them. I don't know what the young somebody, my, one of my daughters told me about the young lady. Now what's her name? That, 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 all the young girls, all the young people got connected on. Them? Raven. Not Raven. That's Marley Raven, Marley. old school, huh? Marley. Marley. Not Miley Cyrus. She's old school too. Sandia, yeah, they, oh, I think it's his name, Sandia. Yeah, now, yeah, but they, they, they are, let me tell you what they're doing. They, they are connecting young people and they are appealing. But watch what these young people do that they're connecting to. They, were, they lie to their mama, they lie to their daddy, they sneak out and be on the phone with other boys. They, 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 they raving, all of them did it. And they get you all hooked and laughing and, and joke, joking, and you're allowing your children to watch. And think rebellion is the way it's supposed to be. To lie. You're supposed to lie to your mom and dad. That ain't what the Bible say. The Bible says honor your mother and father. No, you're supposed to go through this. You're supposed to sneak out and have some boy calling some boy and your woman and, your, and, and all this. That, so they teach you a false love. And they got, and Satan got it so bad that we tell our little kids, where your boyfriend? He one years old. Too. Where your girlfriend? Trying to what? Insert a false love to a child that don't even know how to love themselves yet. Learning how to love, but you're teaching that child that love is the affection from a man or, or, or a boy and not from a father. And that's not, the, but then fathers are absent, so it makes it easier for a boy to sneak in there and, be a, and try to be a father figure, what I mean emotionally. Are we getting this? It's real. Satan, I'm telling you, his deception is to begin to masquerade hatred as love. That's his so-called masterpiece that God has destroyed. To make you think you have love and all you're operating in is lust and perversion. You see it in the movies. It's like a beautiful love story. People crying in a movie that's laced with lust that God don't even want to watch. You, caught, you thought it was a love story, loving basketball. Pure 
lust, perversion. There was no love in that. It was lust and perversion. It was sin and ungodly before God. But they projected it as this beautiful romantic story that at the end, everything went all beautiful. And the church sit there, and we, and we, be, in, we be in the church. And we so, we so concerned about, this person got a demon, this person got, yeah, we want to cast out demons, but what about the demon in your mind? What about that spirit of rebellion in you? Because the Bible says rebellion is as witchcraft, and you just as rebellion as rebellion can go. Say we growing. growing. Say our spiritual man is growing. Mm -hmm. He reading. He said, so we know, watch this. We know adultery will be able to be dealt with through love. Go ahead. You should not commit adultery. You shall not murder. Murder, killing will be able to be eliminated if we operate in what? Love. Go ahead. You shall not steal. We know stealing. If you notice, he connected the commandments, these things being what? fulfilled when you and I operate in love. So if I love, if I love my brother, I'm not going to be stealing from him. Amen. But that love is a godly love. And I need that godly love to be able to crush that desire I have of what I want. Because I'm a place what I want. You know how it is. You want to, you, 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 you want to get to, you going to a party or you want to get somewhere. So you kind of ignore the lights. Your stop signs, you stop for, you, you cruise through them. We, don't, we cruise through them. We don't think about the damage we can cause because why? What we want has us, has our mind set on getting there. Regardless of who, what damage we may cause. Because, you know, you running that light. You're doing 80 miles, uh, 90 miles, on, uh, not, not about because you're trying to get to a thing after you get out the work because something you want to do and have fun with, but you're breaking all the laws to get there. And not concerned of the damage you may cause someone by breaking. I mean, no. If you're doing 90 yards, you can really move in that fast on, t on the 95. You can kill somebody. You can cause an accident because you're driving recklessly. I'm, not, I'm, I'm straight. No. 90 miles is reckless driving if it says to 60. It's not about how straight you are. It's about you violating what the law said that it's safe for everybody to do on that. Oh, see, this, 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 this is good. Because I don't know about you. It's convicting. <laughs> it's convicting. Amen. <laughs> you cruise through a stop sign because why? You're trying to get where you have to go. This discrediting the law. Watch it. And when we do what we want to do, we're not thinking about love because love will say somebody might be coming. When you have the love, will consider the damage that you can do to somebody else. See, love will tell me, no, I, I, I'm going. I'm going to pay this person. Or I'm going to do this because they are counting on this. Love would cause you to be responsible. Amen? Love will cause you to keep your word to people. Because why? They're counting on it. You know, I know somebody that, you know, I know somebody who have a business. She tell people, okay, be here at 2, two o'clock. People roll up 2.30, 2.30. That ain't love because you have no regard on what that person paying, what they doing. That's you. You selfish. You don't. Know and see, I'm gonna tell you something. Oh, I'm about. Oh, I hear you, Holy Spirit. Me too. Some of us. Oh, I'm gonna come to church when I want. You. You know what? That ain't an act of love either. Doing it when you want to, how you want. See, discipline comes in every area of love. And yet, the reason why we're so easy to take a side deal, because in many areas we have already watered down because of what we want. We like to hold people accountable for what we call major sin or major disobedience or major pain when we're, the Bible said, a little leaven. That's, it's a little foxes that you are overlooking that causes you to be careless with my word when it gets bigger. It's that little place where you say, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a come and I'm going to be there at a certain time and you show up hours late. It's, that, it's a little places that you do, those little foxes that cause their daughters Flat wide open. It's a little glimpsing at something. Now that glimpse then came to a little stare. Now that stare then came to just full out watching. It was that little glimpse that you didn't turn your, you, you were like, let me turn my eyes. Let me, let me turn that up. That ain't, that ain't, 
Why? I'm not worried about if that music pleased me. I'm worried about if it pleased God who's in me. And since the father, this is the God that told Cain he had no respect for his offering. He's still that same way today. He does, he's, not, he's not accepting everything we bring before him. Because he's still the same. He's still, the Bible says he's still the same today yesterday. He did not change from that. And grace did not change God from accepting something. Grace was the thing that removed you from what God, amen, was in accepting. It didn't put you in a position to, for God to accept it. Shall we continue in sin? God forbid. So God, grace doesn't put you in a position where God wants to accept sin. It is the way for you to get from under sin by the blood. Amen? Are we learning something? Finish it up. So we can... Okay. <laughs> you shall not murder. You shall not steal. You should not bear false witness. See, when we operate love, we ain't going to bear false witness against one another. Go ahead. You shall not covet. We're not going to He said the answer to the law was love. And love was, God, what was revealed in God's son that God sent his son that he may, what? Take the place for us. Go ahead. And if there's any other commandment, mm -hmm. are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Love does love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Who is my neighbor? Huh. Better go read that. We better we all go read that. Because then a good Samaritan show who the neighbor. Well, I love you because you I, I'm loving you because you black. I'm loving you because you white. I'm like, no, who said who is my neighbor? The man who fell upon thieves. Amen? The good Samaritan the Samaritan. Your neighbor is someone that you see that's in need. How many of you know that the, what was it, the rabbi, the, the priest, probably was a priest and uh, the Levite. They walked right past the man. They looked because they didn't see him as his neighbor, because of, but they didn't care nothing about his condition. But so your neighbor is when you see somebody in, 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 in need. See, but we walk right past him. But Jesus said, when we have done it to the least, we have done it unto him. Amen? Somebody hungry, give them something to eat. Somebody thirsty, give them something to drink. Somebody naked, give them something to wear. God, when did I do these things to you? When you did it to the least? Lord, go ahead. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Y'all stop. There. Love is what? And Jesus came not to do away with the law, but to do what? So if we, the Bible says, in him we live and move and have our being. So if we are living and moving in him, then we are fulfillment of the law. Amen. We're moving in him who came to fulfill the law in love. Amen. Amen. Are there any questions? You want to ask a question? Come ask the question. This is what the classroom is about. Amen. This is the message that we're talking about. Amen. You don't feel good, bro? Yeah, I feel good. I will no, I will concentrate there. Like, like love, like, like when we take the word, the word of love, it just that we gotta know that what the certain thing you supposed to watch, you supposed to not watch. Because love is the heart. Because if you're watching anything, the heart, the heart ain't gonna move right. Thank God. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'll look up. Okay.
Any, anyone else? Any questions? Any? Do we get it? See? I hope we get to that place, amen. Let me, where this door, what it, what this comes in, right? And this goes out, and now our intellect, our emotions, and desires are saturated with the word of God's love and the actions of God. That others, that our brothers and sisters, will be able to see that love, and even those who don't know God will see God through the love that we have toward one another. Amen. Let's bow our head, Father God. We thank you tonight for your word that it will not return void but that it will prosper in that which you have sense to do. God, every trick and trap of the enemy that will try to harden our heart, cause us, not to, cause us not to see or hear or receive. We denounce it right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that this word that you have declared and decreed tonight will not return void. But God, it will fall upon good ground and bring forth 40, 60, 100 fold unto your glory and your glory alone. God, we thank you that your word says that the outwardly man is perishing, but the inwardly man is being renewed daily. So, God, we thank you for renewing us daily, every day, God, and taking us from glory to glory to glory. For we know that Christ in us is the hope of glory. God, we thank you that your will will be done. Lord, I pray that it be anything in the midst of in any place in us, Father God. Let that be, let your consuming fire, Father God, consume it. That all, that all that is left is standing is you. In each and every one of our lives, we ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen.